Hello, what is happening? This is Maxim Cruz coming back to you to answer the age old question, real estate buy versus rent. Let's get right into it. All right. So the age old question, real estate buying versus renting. Now, before you click off, before you scroll to another video, this isn't just another one of these videos comparing it. I am going to be sharing something with you that I have covered up here with these blank pieces of paper that is going to completely change how you think the buy-in versus renting model. And there's actually one more term in there, which is investing. Okay. So let's get right into it. For whatever reason that you tuned on into this channel, you found me. Thank you for joining us here. Remember, we never ask you to subscribe. So first of all, my disclosure, I am a real estate broker as well as an investor because I am a licensed real estate broker. The information that I'm going to share with you is for information purposes only. I do not know what your scenario is. So this is not investing advice. The last thing I want to do is lose my real estate license because I'm sharing information. So that's my legal disclaimer. Uh, if you want to, uh, you know, find more information regarding investing, I definitely recommend that you meet with your local broker or with your local tax professional certified financial planner somebody that is doing it but looking at it from personally from a personal point of view as well as a real estate broker point of view as well as a real estate investor point of view let me answer this question for you today on buying versus renting now, if you've ever tuned into Grant Cardone and you know who Grant Cardone is, you know that he always says, don't buy, rent, rent, rent. Now, just take a step back. Grant Cardone, I love you. You're my man. I, I subscribe to Cardone University and you've completely transformed my life and my business. And I agree with you on some things, but on other things, I disagree. And today I'm going to show you what those things are. The one factor that I agree 100 million percent with Grant Cardone is this factor, mobility. When you rent, okay, you have the advantage of mobility, especially in today's day and age, you know, more and more is becoming a technological world. We're working here and we're working there and we're traveling and we're doing things. You have options when you rent, right? because you can sign a yearly lease, a one year annual lease, or you can go on a month to month rental model, or you can even do the Airbnb model or the timeshare or whatever. So you could travel around. So from a mobility perspective, I agree with that 100%. You have flexibility. Now this is, I think this is the trick to really answering this question for you, for you that is watching this and trying to figure out, Hey, which way do I go? And that answer is market price. Now I know we've been in the longest, you know, bull run for a while here, depending on when you're watching this, um, you know, things are going really, really good with real estate right now and prices are high, but not only that rentals are high as well more and more people that I meet and that I discuss with, I see that, you know, they're paying as much in rent as they are if they were paying a mortgage. Now be careful here. A lot of people will say, look, it makes sense. The rentals are $2,000. Your mortgage is $1,800. You know, let's get you into a nice home that you own and you have equity and all this stuff. Remember going back to Grant Cardone, mobility is key. Number one thing is depending on the time that you buy, Okay. Depending on the time that you buy, if you buy in the high market, you will have to stay in that property for seven to 10 years in order for it to be worth the same money that you pay for it. Right? So again, that's a factor that you need to consider if you're buying in the middle or in the low cycle in the market, like I did, uh, you know, you are going to be taking advantage of the price and then you can sell or you can hold on to that property. You have options, right? But specifically in price, let's look at market price on rental versus all of the expenses that are going to go into owning a property. Now, when you rent, right? Let's say the market rent is $2,000. If your mortgage, your insurance, your taxes and your maintenance, all of those numbers included 
if those numbers are less expensive than your rent or very, very close, I would say within 10% of each other, you know, let's say renting is 2,200 and all of these numbers added is, uh, sorry, let's say renting is 2,000 and all of these numbers added is $2,200, then it might make sense long-term Let's say you have kids, let's say they're just starting off school, you want them to be in a great school system, et cetera, et cetera. There's multiple factors for you to consider here. But again, just from a numbers point of view, this is where it makes sense. Now, remember, timing is important. Look, if you look at any uh, trends with any sort of investments, real estate, uh, you know, the stock market, cryptocurrency, uh, you know, commodities, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Everything has trends, everything goes up and everything goes down. So timing the market is impossible, but more or less you could probably guess where things are going. Now again, in 2007, could you have seen it coming? Somewhat, um, I don't think people predicted that every, you know, everything was gonna go on sale, discounted 50 to 100% off. Uh, but nevertheless, that is what happened. You know, same thing in 1929 when we had the Great Depression, you know, prices plummeted down substantially. So every certain number of years, the market adjusts, okay? So the market adjusts. Those adjustments sometimes are 5%, 10%, 20%, and then it recovers over two to three years and balances out, etc. And then, for example, 2007, again, was drastic, where real estate was like 50% off. Some occasions it was 80, 90% off. Some occasions it was free. You know, people were giving away their homes. Um, but again, when you look at that, consider timing. The second thing that a lot of people, actually not a lot of people talk about, is local factors. What is happening in your local community? Did that huge factory that used to employ 75% of the people that live in that city, did it all of a sudden close down? Are there other things that are happening on a local level? For example, Flint, Michigan. If you ever heard of the story with the water and everything like that, what happened to their real estate, right? There's a whole controversy going on on how, you know, there was delays in that market with getting the water fixed and how people were taking advantage, uh, you know, of the people that were losing their homes because of the water bills, because of the situation, et cetera, et cetera. So again, local factors that sometimes don't happen. All right. The most important thing here, which is the reason that I disagree with Grant Cardone sometimes, okay? Grant Cardone, I love you, my man, but let's look into this, all right? Monthly cash flow, cash flow, baby. This is what this is about, cash flow, right? So if you're in business, if you love business, or if you're an individual, guess what? You have monthly cash flow every single month. You have money coming in and you have money going out. That is the difference between your income and your expenses. The difference in that is cash flow. So let's look at it. Look, I'm not talking here uh, for average. I don't know what your scenario is, but let's just say you make $5,000 a month. Now, I'm not considering taxes and all these other deductions and all that stuff. Let's just keep it simple, okay? So let's say you make $5,000 a month, right? And let me try to write this down here, $5,000 per month. So let's say your rent is $2,300 per month versus buying is $1,900 per month when you add your mortgage, your insurance, your taxes, your maintenance, okay? Make sure you add those factors in there, okay? Now you tell me, I don't know about you, maybe Grant Cardone can make a follow-up video and explain this to me on why it's better to rent. If you're making $5,000 a month where you are at, your kids are going to school there, you're having a family, you're involved in the community, you like the things that are going on, you're not planning to leave that town for the next, I don't know, 10 years or whatever it is that you're deciding to do with your life. Can somebody please explain to me how is it better to rent when on a monthly cash flow basis, 
If you take your 5,000 hard earned dollars and you subtract $2,300 for rent, that leaves you with $2,700 left over for other expenses versus right here, you have $3,100. Again, I'm not counting taxes. I know we're going to get people here commenting how I left a bunch of things out. I'm just looking at simple numbers and I'm just looking at cash flow. Now you tell me in the scenario that you are in, if at the end of the month, okay, the month came and you had the option of having $2,700 left inside of your pocket or $3,100 left inside of your pocket, which one would you choose? I don't know about you, but I choose the bigger number all day long. And that is why cash flow is important. And that is why we talk about investments. Okay. Personally, I'll share my story with you on exactly what happened. And I promise you, this is only going to take about 30 seconds. So back in 2011, my wife and I, uh, we decide to get married and believe it or not, as crazy as we are, as crazy as we are in love with each other and things that we want to get done and do a wedding and all that stuff. Guess what we decide to do? We decide to get the crazy idea that it's better to invest in multifamily real estate. So guess what we end up doing? We end up buying a four unit property. Now, how did we buy that property? We bought it using an FHA loan okay with 3.5 percent down payment now how much did i pay for this property we paid two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for it so my three and a half percent down payment i actually got the seller to give us back some money for closing costs so all in in the property we were roughly nine thousand five hundred dollars in now at that time when we were looking the average uh, rental prices were about $1,500 a month. So guess what? If we needed first, last, and security, it was going to take us $4,500 for us to move in together. So guess what? Just for a little bit more money, we were able to buy our four-unit property that cash flowed every single month. What does that mean? That means I had one unit, one F. This is where I lived. Okay. I had one rear and I still have this property to this day. And this is what I want for you to take away from this, from this cash flow. At that time, the rent was 750. All right. We had two front at that time. It was 1150 and we had two rear at that time. It was 800. Guess what? My mortgage, my insurance, my taxes, my maintenance, at that time, because since then the proper, the property taxes, the insurance have gone up, but I've also raised the rents. But at that time, my mortgage payment, I remember it like if it was yesterday, was $1,689. Now you tell me if I'm getting 800 here plus 1150 here plus 750 here, and I live in this unit, what is happening with my monthly cash flow? Okay, it's very simple numbers. 1950, 2,700. Okay, 2,700. Minus my mortgage was 1689. Then I had the water bill. Then I had some maintenance, etc. Plus or minus on a monthly basis because this is a four-unit property. Plus or minus, we were cash flowing about $600 positive. Not only that, but we lived for free. Okay. And this is why I love real estate. Okay. And guess what? Today in the market that we are in today, you can't get as good of a deal as this, but sometimes you can. Okay. So this is exactly what I want you to focus on and what I want you to think about cash flow. Now, let's say you don't buy a four unit property. Let's say that at that time we decide to buy a uh, $250,000 home and the market rents are about 1500 bucks. Uh, at that time, let's say we keep the same exact scenarios. It's actually the number should be different because this number right here includes my mortgage, my insurance and my taxes. The taxes for a four unit versus the taxes for a single unit 
$250,000 home is going to be a little bit less. But let's say the numbers are exactly the same. So we're paying more, uh, $189 here per month more than if we would have rented, right? But what's happening with my cash flow every single month when I earn income from my job, from whatever it is that we're doing, I got to put in $1,689 in order to live where I live versus in this scenario, I'm actually living for free. And guess what? I have cash flow coming in. So with all that being said, depending on what it is that you are looking to do in some scenarios, it is better to rent versus buying in other scenarios. It's actually better to buy versus renting. Now, again, look at it from an investment point of view. What is going to be a better investment with cash flow? This is king. Every single month, the rent is due. The student loans come in, right? You got to pay the light bill. You got to pay the insurance bill. You got to pay the cars. You got to pay this. You got to pay that. Those things come on a monthly basis. So if your real estate property can produce you income on a monthly basis or help with your personal cash flow, I think it's a win situation every single time. Now, the next series of videos that I'm going to have coming out, and again, you should see this on a playlist or a card should pop up, or if not, I'll add them the, the playlist to the description will be various scenarios of properties that you can actually buy using FHA loans. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to analyze these properties one by one. So every single week I have a set of properties that are coming in and I'm going to look at all different markets across the United States. So you could see maybe I hit one of your cities. If you have a property that you want me to analyze, go ahead, uh, post it in the comments, or you can go ahead and reach out to me. There'll be a nice little email that will fly across here. Uh, reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to analyze this property and maybe you can make a better decision on what you decide to do. Also, if you're in the decision of buying a property, especially an investment property, as a real estate broker with over 13 years of experience, I have connections in all 52 states. So if you need a broker or if you need an agent to help you buy or sell a property, I'd be more than happy to connect you with a professional that will service you correctly. So with all of that being said, stay tuned for the next videos. If you're in a position to, you know, get out of that rat race and really make some investments. I think FHA still gives great opportunities. I remember Warren Buffett recently said that if he had the opportunity to go back and buy homes using FHA loans, he would do it every single day because you're leveraging debt. So with all that being said, thank you for joining me here. Hopefully you're able to take something away from this focus on cash flow. with that, have an awesome day and I'll see you on the next video.